Hey guys, Lapeller back with another video. Today I'm going to be discussing why I will be switching over to my carbon rims on my level entry road bike and while I'll be upgrading it as of recently given the circumstances I've recently encountered with my level entry road bike. So if this is something that you're interested in, let's get right into this video. Now before I get into the video and explain why I'll be putting the carbon rims that I have laying around on my level entry road bike and getting away from my uh, aluminum training rims that came stock on the bike. Uh, I would greatly appreciate if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps with the overall growth of the channel and uh, you know just the overall uh, goal of this channel is just giving you guys the most uh, educational information that I can about cycling on a variety of topics. So it really helps out the channel. But let's get right into this video. So right here you guys have, uh, these are the giant stock PR2 uh, rims that are aluminum so this is a heavy uh, wheel set but then again it's to be expected this is comes stock on their level entry TCR that I do have I have the TCR advanced uh, 2 uh, in the 2020 model and this is the stock rim so it's a really good training rim obviously if you're not racing uh, more than enough just for even casual riding but I use this as my training rims and then I had carbon rims that I was planning on using for the road race season but unfortunately that was cancelled so I haven't got around to using them so that's, this is where it brings me into why I'm actually upgrading sooner than later. And now where unfortunately, rather than having a nice set of trainer rims and racing rims, I'm gonna have to have one set of rims to be basically do everything now because I'm pretty much in a situation. So the situation is that the spokes have been breaking on my rear um, aluminum rim, stock rim. So I already broke, um, well I didn't, it broke uh, already one uh, spoke. I got it replaced. It cost me about $60 because they had to set up tubeless again. So if you guys don't know what that means, it, it means it doesn't have a tube inside. So they had to take the rim tape off to replace the spoke. They replaced the spoke, put new rim tape on, put new sealant, the labor. And then on top of that, they had to true the wheel. So, you know, pretty expensive. And I said, you know what? First time, benefit of the doubt, uh, whatever. And I haven't ridden, the, I've ridden the bike a lot, but a lot of it has been indoors. Uh, just because of the nature of uh, my lifestyle, you know, a lot of the riding I try to get done really early and I don't feel like going out when it was 15, 16 degrees. And uh, as the weather got better, I actually started riding a lot more outside, especially doing the group rides on the weekends. So, you know, right when this happened was at the end of August, after I put a big week of training in uh, half indoors really early and then three hours every day also outside and like i said the group rides so you know i was getting the flow of ultra riding and then that's when it happened the spoke broke and ever since then you know just it, it's been so hard uh to get giant canada and specifically that's where i'm from to actually warranty this now you know it gets a little tricky in terms of warranty so I, i'm not 100 percent sure but more or less when you know you have a brand new bike that has been ridden less than you know, a full season and I'm not a heavy rider. I'm not an aggressive rider where I'm riding on really rough terrain. You know, I don't believe spoke should be popping that easily, right? Especially when the bike is less than a season old. So I reached out to them and basically I had to take it to a giant retailer um, to get this warrantied. And like the bike shops in general, I don't know how it is uh, for you guys, wherever you guys are from, please comment in the comment section down below. But it's understandable that they don't want to do warranty claims because if you didn't buy the bike from them, why would they want to do service on something that you didn't purchase from them? But then the funny thing on that is that they're going to get reimbursed from the manufacturer, in this case, Giant. And on top of that, you know, if they can, you know, if I've never been to their shop or if you haven't ever been to their shop and they can do this warranty claim, make you a happy customer, you know, easily next bike you purchase or someone that you refer to them you know they're going to make their money back for the effort that they put in to do this warranty claim so i find it just very uh d disappointing because i had a terrible experience i'm not going to drop bike shop names but uh just terrible like the I, I don't know if it was the manager or the owner he like he at the, the the bike shop i went to basically said to me he's like why would i do that it's a waste of my time and it's like okay you're a giant retailer and on top of that if that's how you feel then why why it, it just, it baffled me because it's like, you could have me as a customer. I have, I'm thinking of buying uh, new S work shoes. Like I have other purchases related to cycling that I want to purchase within the next, you know, two, three months. And instantly by saying that you lost, you lost me as a customer. Why would I do that? And when I try to relay this information back to giant Canada, it's very cryptic. They, they can't really disclose how, how the policy works 
uh, just in terms of do, do you pay beforehand or after to the bike shop for warranty. Like it just gets really confusing. And as a consumer, you should never have the consumer being baffled in terms of how to get a simple warranty, uh, you know, solved. So this has been ongoing for the past month. And, um, I got to the point where I was like, I'm losing so much good quality outdoor riding. Uh, I don't want to be indoors because obviously, you know, that's a winter thing or when the weather is bad, I want to be outside actually riding. So I was kind of like in a limbo stage where I was like, oh, I didn't want to buy you tires for my carbon rims because I didn't have like, these are tubeless, so I can't just swap it easily because then I would have to get this set, set back this and tubeless if they get fixed or when they get fixed, hopefully. So I was like, oh, I got to buy new uh, tires and then I had to get new brake pads. So I was like looking at around like 300 easy um, in terms of upgrading that and having on my bike. So I actually went along with purchasing. If you guys haven't seen the video, I purchased new tires. I got some rim brakes. But then when I was cleaning out my garage, I found a set of like pretty much brand new uh, tires and brake pads. So it kind of solved my issue. So I'm pretty much at the point where I'm going to put those on the bike with carbon rims and get back out to ride and get back onto group rides and finish it off. But I'm just like very, very disappointed in Giant Canada just for making this whole warranty situation uh, such a such a mess and such a hassle. And that's why I'm very excited from this experience. It really opened my eyes. Uh, and you know, with my comparison videos, not only with Giant, but other brands, especially on the low end tier stuff, right? Because I have a more expensive uh, Giant bike that has carbon rims. And you know, when you have more expensive, uh, not stock, but this is a basic stock, right? And the reason why I got the bike was because I was planning on having my carbon rims that had laid around previously to be my race wheel. So I was just looking at this, for a trainer wheel. But it, it brings up the fact that for a lot of people, such as myself, maybe you guys that are, or majority of you guys watching that watch my comparison videos that are looking at mid tier, lower tier, not really high tier, you know, it makes you question what value are you really getting? Like if you're saving with giant, you know, 200, 300, $400, maybe even $700 in the max, but their, their rims break or you just get warranty issues like spokes popping and just the quality of the rims, like a decent set of aluminum rims can easily cost $600, $700. So if you get that value in the more expensive bike, it puts things in perspective. Now, you know, I think this is something I'm going to keep looking into on my channel and really, you know, dive into, especially I want to figure out the solution for this problem to see if Giant really stands behind their products. Um, just trying to be transparent as they should also too, because if this is someone that rides a lot, right? Um, and, and products are breaking, like what entices me to the next bike I buy a giant if I'm getting this much uh, conflict in terms of just solving a problem that's literally enabling me to ride and they don't really follow up, like they could care less. That's at least how I felt at the moment. So, you know, I'm gonna basically, my, my priority right now, because that was draining me so much, is to basically um, get the carbon rims on my bike, get right outside again, get off, get off the indoor Swift, even though it's amazing. Uh, get back out riding and then really tackle this problem. Uh, go to an, a new bike shop that's a giant retailer. Contact Giant again and say like this is this is honestly ridiculous. And until it gets solved, I'm gonna make. I'll keep you guys up to date. But I just want to let you guys know if you, any of you guys follow me on Instagram or Strava, you'll you'll realize a lot of the riding has just been indoors just because I've been dealing with this, which is why it pretty much answers the question why am I upgrading my level entry road bike to carbon rims is because these basically have a warranty issue. So it puts things in perspective. I wanna do more research into it and, and, and more detailed video if you guys ever encounter this or maybe if you guys are debating between two bikes or, you know, it's really important to see what stock items can usually go wrong. It's usually the rims, right? Like a spoke is a broken spoke, right? So that's interesting. And then also I was dealing with uh, a tubeless uh, situation where the back tire was, you know, ha had a problem at the beginning of the season and then the front one recently went. So I took it to a bike shop uh, basically, there was no sealant. Even though I put sealant in it, I don't know why it, it, it evaporated, disappeared. But that's actually fixed, so I'm picking that up uh, as a, as we speak. So I'll be back out riding definitely um, this coming week. A lot of more outdoor rides, long rides. Very excited. Just happy to get back in the swing of things. So if you guys have been wondering where I've been in terms of riding, why is it so much indoors? That's basically it. And that's one thing you guys got to remember. I'll put this down now. And pretty much finish the video. Is that you guys got to remember with cycling? It's kind of like a car, but not so much. It's even, I would say, a little bit more um, sometimes of a disadvantage or inconvenience that a lot of things can go wrong in terms of just bike maintenance or bike problems, warranty, 
or just things not shifting properly. So you gotta you gotta stay very uh, optimistic and relaxed because it can get pretty discouraged to actually ride your bike if you're dealing with all these ongoing issues. So I was pretty calm about it. As long as I had the indoor trainer, I can get my training done. But at the same time, you can never replicate or try to replace real riding outside. So if you guys you know like this update of why I'm putting carbon rims on my level entry road bike. Then again, I already explained in other videos, I'll link it maybe in the description of why you shouldn't really upgrade. Um, but you know, I had things laying around, so I was like, might as well. But usually you should always, you know, buy your bikes completely built up with the things with the specs you want rather than you know going cheap at the beginning and then long term spending more money. So that's basically why I'm in the situation. So if you any of you guys ask, hey, because I wanted to make this video, because if any of you guys see a later video with the carbon rims, you'll be like, wait, I thought you said don't upgrade level entry road bikes. So like I said, I already had them laying around and I honestly was only planning to use my carbon rims for racing, not actually just for, uh, you know, training. So pretty interesting. I'll keep you guys up to date and until the next one, keep on pedaling.